Uh, Vic Goddard, um, can I just firstly have your reflections on the comments by the, in- by the inquest in respect of the, uh, the death of Ruth Perry? Yeah, I mean, obviously, firstly, incredibly sad that a family's had to go through this. Um, but for the fact that the, the, the system of accountability in this country has been named as likely to be a cause of her death or at least a significant, you know, contributor to somebody choosing to take their own life means it's a really stark time for us to stop and reflect on what we're doing to each other. So is this basically is a, a tipping point for Ofsted? Does this make, make you conclude that Ofsted are, aren't fit for purpose? Ofsted has to pause where it is currently because inspectors at that inquest said, we know it does this. More people cry than don't cry. We know it has an impact on the health and the well-being of the staff there. We know we make it, it makes it harder to recruit teachers if you happen to fail an Ofsted. They know those things. So surely we can't keep doing that to ourselves or to the communities. So for me, it needs to be paused. We've got a new HMC, our new chief inspector coming in in January. So let's let's give them a chance to reflect on what's been said and what we've seen the system is doing to, to schools and communities and let's do it better. And nobody's saying, I'm certainly not saying we want less inspection. I want more inspection, not less. I want more regular input. I want more regular advice and guidance, not less. For somebody to come into any school that I've served for 20 years, I've served this community and I hope I've done it well. Some people will say I have, some people I haven't, but the community judges me every day and has continued to judge me all that time. For two strangers to come into my school for two days in five years and tell me how good or bad it is, is nonsense. And especially when it can have such an effect on that school's and that community's ability to continue to improve. I can't recruit if I fail an Ofsted, it's simple as that. So it has to be a time for everybody to go, okay, we've not got it right, let's, let's pull on our big boy pants, we've not got it right, let's stop and get it right for the future. So somebody actually picked up the phone to you from Ofsted and said, Vic, can you give us one piece of advice? Yeah. If you could limit it down to one piece, what yeah. would it be? Well, Single word judgments need to go. That's the first thing. You know, can you sum up the last five years of the work we've done past was in the word good, or the or requires improvement? You of course you can't. It means nothing. It means nothing. So, but in the real world of my employment, you fail an Ofsted, likelihood is I will lose my job. That's likely, one way or the other. That's where where we'll end up. So. That balance for me as a human, as well as trying to serve a community, we've got to get that better. So we, the single word judgments are nonsense, and they don't tell parents what they need to know. But is that fair? If I dip into the finding the expected report and I look at, say, for example, just re- most recent one, just off the yeah. most recent Harlow Fields, I see the one word judgment, but then I see page after page of a, of an inspection that took over two days in September October. So I can see it's not just one word. Yeah, it's a document, isn't it? Um, it's interesting because there's some really clear research. If you put a grade on something, that's all people read. That's all they remember. You know, if I if I put a piece of work out to a student and put nine out of 10 and then put a load of words that say, this is how you can improve it. They'll say, oh, nine out of 10, great, thanks. And that, there's evidence that that's the case. So it doesn't give parents the credit they deserve. They wanna know what I do well, and they should know what I'm working on still, because then they can make a judgment based on their child's specific needs. Not, well, this school is good. Good about what? What's good? What, what am I good this day? The problem you've got is that I know that I, it's easier for me to get a good at this school the second week in September than it is next week. Statistically, that's fact, okay? There's evidence that proves that. So why, I'm disadvantaged if they come in next week. That's not fair. If the system is a fair system of accountability, I should have the same chance of getting a good in December as I have in September. I'm the, I think I've got, I've got, the, I've got the numbers down here. There's some, a ridiculous number around. So schools have always been good, okay? so. If you're in the least deprived part of the world, in England, 68% of schools in the least deprived areas have never been below good, okay? 68% never been below good. In the most deprived area, that's in the teens, that's like 15%. So if I choose to work in an area that hasn't got as much money as another one, I'm choosing to make my job more difficult. Well, that's not right, is it? Because actually this community needs brilliant teachers. And if, it, if it's discouraging brilliant teachers from coming here, the system's got to be wrong. Was there ever a golden era for Ofsted as, in your experience in all your years, or has it always been a, 
Uh, it, it's always going to be. It's always going to be difficult. I mean, there, you have to remember that Ofsted's only been around for, since the mid nineties. Okay, it didn't exist before that. And I'm not saying the schools aren't better now than they were then because I think they are. But is there a gold in? No, because I, I think it, it's always been about weighing the pig. Our system has been set up to be, to be about weighing the pig, and weighing the pig doesn't make it heavier, and that's that's the problem. I think the framework before last, where there was a, a more emphasis on the school knowing itself and what it should work on, I think that was better. But the same inspection framework that inspects my school is used to inspect a primary school, a special school, an alternative provision school. Are you telling me that my school is run the same way as a special school? Of course it's not, but we have one framework. So it needs to be smarter, it needs to be more appropriate to the setting, and it needs to put at the top of its agenda the most important thing. So I want a safeguarding check every year. I want an external safeguarding check every year. But there are schools that got an outstanding that didn't have any safeguarding check for 10, 12, 14 years. So we don't know if they're doing DBS checks to make sure somebody's not a criminal record, got a criminal record. That wasn't known. That's the system. That's what the system did. It's got to change. Safeguarding's got to be higher. School improvement has got to be higher. So. If I've got an inspector who's visited 100 schools in the last three months, they probably know people are doing things better than me. So tell me, put me in touch with those people so I can learn from them. And if we've got a system that has that flexibility, with somebody who cares enough about this community to be here for more than two days every five years, it's got to be better. Are you alone? I see people on social media, I see people on Newsnight, etc. But I, do you feel like a relatively lone voice? <laughs> no. I think it is difficult, Michael, right? Because. I have been here 20 odd years. I am closer to the end of my career than I am in the beginning, you know? So, and, and I feel that I've been given a platform to be loud and to be noisy for the profession and for this community. And so I take that opportunity. So I'm probably more robust than some. And I do wish there were times where I think, speak up. Because I hear people moaning about Ofsted in one breath, but then putting the banner outside the front of their school that says they're good or outstanding in the next breath. Well, you can't say what they do is bad, but then take the good bits that help you. So I think as a profession, we need a united voice that says you can't keep doing this. It's not making schools better. It's not helping children. It's time to stop. But you could, yeah, but you could be sort of a, a new head to a primary and you want to get an extension yeah. and you need to, you know, sometimes you catch more honey than vinegar. Yeah. Whereas squeakish wheel gets the most oil. It's hard, isn't it? It is hard. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very aware that if you're, you know, I'm, I'm in a position where hopefully, you know, the community knows me and knows that I'm going to speak up on its behalf. Whether they agree with me or not is irrelevant, but I'm going to do what I think is right for the community. Others, I haven't got the, the years in the bank that I've got. So I understand why they'd be, they'd be frightened to it. And, and I'll be honest, I, there are times where I think, by being noisy, do I make my schools more vulnerable? You know, are they going to get me? Well, I, 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 shouldn't need, I shouldn't be able to think like that in a system that's fair. But or, and then the other half of my brain goes, yeah, but they might also be a bit more wary of you, Vic. And so I, I, I flip flop around with that. But the fact that I think it's even a possibility that my inspection might be slanted because of how loud I am or how noisy, how much I moan, means there's something wrong with the system.